we we get a lot of people that feel that um, they're not really understood in their religious trauma because the therapist or the counselor hasn't themselves necessarily lived in a closed religious community or understood the the um, importance of this in giving their life meaning. Now, it's a little bit different in Eastern religions and in, in um, how they see it. American culture really espouses a lot of dualism um, due to the influence of religious ideas upon which it's founded, which are dominantly Judeo-Christian ideas. So inevitably, this kind of approach places you under a new dualistic support uh, kind of authority, Western psychology and science at the expense of any religious or spiritual practice. So it's kind of an all or nothing, turn or burn, black or white approach again. People want to take you out of the religious view and now kind of take you into a scientific atheistic approach. So we have to understand that there's this middle ground, right? So religion provides a lot of certainty. And we're tempted to leave that, that um, certainty. We're left in this vacuum of uncertainty to work out our own truth. And we want to jump right back into another place of certainty and kind of make science into sort of um, a comfort zone, right? That gives us a lot of certainty. Whereas the answer is, and not that we're anti-science in any way or saying they should go back to the religion, we're just saying that there's a need to be in the uncertainty and to discover your own truth, okay? And to understand in the uncertainty that you feel, you need to be with a lot of your own feelings and try to understand a lot of your own emotions. And sometimes people have a hard time even understanding their emotions because they're experiencing something we call in psychology depersonalization. They don't even feel real or feel that their emotions or body has any value. So the Gnostic approach differs from the deconstructionist method. It differs from this kind of um, cognitive behavioral approach because gnosis is an ancient, ancient Greek word, which means direct conscious knowing. So um, what's different about this is that you are, you are your own authority. And in this approach, you need to learn to trust your own direct conscious experience. You need to understand how to work with your own emotional regulation and learn how to work with your own emotional center, your own mind, and empower yourself, and not necessarily through an authority or a church. You need to learn how to know yourself and trust yourself, because trusting in yourself um, this is a this is a pretty hard process for somebody that grew up in, in a, a very strong religious community where people were always telling them what the devil or what God um, wants for them. This is a little different. So the Gnostic approach is much more, when we say that is much more about you having your own direct knowing, you learning how to trust yourself, you learning how to trust um, what you see is true. And this is where therapists, counselors have to be very careful to not project their own way of seeing reality, their own way of seeing truth, their own biases onto the client. We need to support them. If they want to if they want to go back to um, a Christian model, that's up to them. If they want to change over to a Jewish model, that's up to them. If they want to change over to an Eastern model, that's up to them. If they want to become more, go to a more new agey model, whatever it is, the difference is we're simply saying that there's a universal model of mental health that we look at. And that's the NARM model, the Neuro Effective Relational Model that's based upon attachment trauma uh, research and that was done by Dr. Lawrence Heller and Dr. Elaine Lapierre. And in this model, it's a cross-cultural model where we can see that there are five dominant things that we need to be uh, mentally healthy, right? Emotionally healthy, physically healthy. And cross-culturally, we see these things, right? And that is connection, emotional attunement, trust, the ability to trust, autonomy, and the ability, the capacity to integrate vulnerability, trust, and love with sexual experience. So if we have these five things present, whether we're religious or non-religious, you tend to see people who are living in a very healthy life that where they feel okay with themselves fundamentally. And that really is what we, what we all want. So it's good to have a, a model where um, we are not just pathologizing what the client believes, but you know, you're trying to lead them to a place, right? That's realistic where they can feel okay in themselves and that they know where you're trying to lead them 
It's not just we're leading you to a place where you know your religion is crazy, but we're leading you to a place where you can wake up in the morning and you may not feel blissful, but you can feel fundamentally okay with yourself. Mm. That's extremely important. Some people, sometimes when I'm working with clients, I'll say, look, I don't know if I can take you to happiness, but I definitely know I can take you to the absence of anxiety. And when I say that, they feel so relieved and like, oh my God, I can't even imagine that. If I could just feel the absence of anxiety, I would really feel happy. That's all I need.